What's going on guys? I'm Purple Boy and I'm back at it again with another top 10 uh, list and this time these are my top 10 favorite films of 2017. Woohoo! Yes, I just got done doing my uh, top most disappointing films of 2017. So I want you to go check that out, you know, before you watch this or watch this and then go check that out. Doesn't matter to me, baby. Let's go ahead and jump into this list. Coming in at number 10 is Kong Skull Island. And honestly, when I think back to when I went to the theaters and first watched this, it is still some of the most fun I've had in the theater uh, in all of 2017. I love creature features like this, and Kong Skull Island really delivers. What it lacks in fleshed out human characters, it definitely makes up for in some freaking raw, jaw-dropping monster action. Standout cinematography, the detailed CGI, and a laughable villainous Samuel Jackson makes Kong Skull Island one of my favorite films to watch on 4K Blu-ray. Like, honestly, there are scenes in this film that I keep pausing and rewinding because they're just too cool, man. Just too cool. Number nine, I kind of cheated because I didn't know which one to add. I really wanted to talk about both of them. So coming in at number nine is The Big Sick and Girls Trip. These are two comedies that are funny as hell and represents Hollywood's underappreciated minorities. Kumail introduced us to his culture and his struggle as a comedian by turning his real life love story with his wife into a romantic comedy. Breakout star Tiffany Haddish does a great job showing us all that she has the comedy chops to hang with the best of them. Uh, really giving us one of the best comedic performances of 2017. Um, I also like Girls Trip and the amount of depth that they added to these characters and to their dynamic. Eagerly excited to see more films and more projects from these two. Number eight is Beauty and the in 1997, a blueprint was created for one of the best live action fantasy fairy tales ever on screen. Music, visuals, and the characters were ripped right from the animated film and brought to life perfectly. The advantage of this being in live action is the amount of depth that they were able to add to the story. New songs really touched me as well. No, you'll never leave me. Even as she runs away. I gotta learn the lyrics, but once I do, I'm gonna be singing that baby every day. Coming at number seven is Three Billboards to Ebbing, Missouri. This film is a raw comedic look at racism, violence, and justice and how it affects us as humans. We also get standout performances from Sam Rockwell and Francis McDormand. Three Billboards really keeps it coming with the comedies and the twist that's always being thrown at you throughout the entire film. Like, honestly, your jaw will really drop uh, at some of the things that happen in this movie. It's really ludicrous. Also kind of has that sort of Quentin Tarantino feel to it. I don't know. You should totally go see this movie, though. And then number six is Mother. Very controversial, terrible, a masterpiece, thought-provoking. Or maybe this movie is just pretentious. It really does all depend on the viewer. And that's the beauty of Mother. Jennifer Lawrence gives a pretty good performance as her character is put through the ringer. The film sort of starts off subtle. And then by the end of it, it explodes in the audience's face, really setting off all your senses. I gotta say that this is not for everyone. <laughs> so proceed cautiously. While this movie is not as good as Black Swan, uh, the director still managed to make a character's spiral into madness fascinating to watch. And coming in at number five is Christopher Nolan's Dunkirk. Christopher Nolan is a king at delivering innovative, thought-provoking spectacle. You can add Dunkirk to his already impressive resume. Shots he's able to get in this film with the IMAX camera are honestly stunning. Like some of them are really, really breathtaking. Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to really watch this film in IMAX, uh, but I did watch it in 4K and I have a pretty 
big uh, TV in my living room. I got the pretty much the whole theater, home theater hookup. So I, I kind of feel like I was able to watch Dunkirk as close as uh, he intended it. Seeing the British and French desperately fight their way off of Dunkirk uh, was intense, compelling, and heartbreaking. Not to mention that impressive dogfight in the sky uh, that used minimal CGI. Christopher Nolan is probably one of few who has the clout to actually do this. This movie doesn't have a uh, traditional, straightforward uh, way of telling a story, uh, but the way that it was structured, I thought anyways, helped with the uh, tension and urgency that was pretty much felt throughout the entire film. Coming in at number four, ha, man, was Mudbound. This film is kind of like Mother in the sense that it starts off subtle and just gradually cranks up the tension. And when it goes down in this film, uh, <laughs> you might be compelled to slap somebody. Mudbound is an exploration in racism and humanity's struggle to just survive. The performances in this film are powerful and once again, Jason Mitchell proves he's a capable actor with range. I'm really excited for his career. Uh, it's always fun to watch him on screen and I can't wait to see what he does next. Actually, I believe he has a new show coming out called The Shy and I recommend you guys really check that out. Harry J. Blige. Mary J. Blige up in this thing. <laughs> hey, she did a pretty good job, man. I'm not going to lie. I, I, I think she killed it, and she definitely deserves her Golden Globe nomination. This film shows us that we can really all be civil and live in society together in spite of our differences and preconcepts. But there is always an unrelenting antagonist threatening that peace. Unwarranted hate is ridiculous, especially when you realize that in the end, we're all mudbound. Ah, ah, you see what I did there? <laughs> Your boy is pretty clever. Coming in at number three, baby, woo, is War for the Planet of the Apes. Matt Reeves is becoming one of my favorite directors. What he's done with this franchise is amazing. And what Andy Serkis has done for motion capture performances is groundbreaking. The third <laughs> and hopefully final uh, film in this reboot uh, offers up a really fantastic conclusion to one of my favorite characters in cinema. Caesar's final test as a leader as he fights for the survival and the soul of his people. I also like really Harrison a lot, a lot. <laughs> in this movie. Uh, he offered a really compelling villain with a believable motivation. I have got to get these films in 4K. I mean, if you guys ain't got 4K, what are you doing? You need to get on 4K right now. Number two is Wonder Woman. Consider now one of the best uh, superhero origin films, Wonder Woman succeeded at delivering one of the best on-screen romances in superhero films since Superman the movie. No character outshines the other and both Wonder Woman and Steve Trevor work well as individuals, but they are even better when they work together. I have not seen any other film, okay, I'm not going to see I've never seen, but let's just say I rarely ever see a film achieve this. Do I have to mention the action? Yes, I got to mention the action. Just in case you forgot, it's Zack Snyder, baby. And of course, they had to add some of his action flavor into this film. And when she throws down, boy, she throws down. <laughs> Bravo to Patty Jenkins and Gal Gadot. Your boy is excited to see what's next. November 2019 cannot come fast enough. Here we go, baby. Number one. <laughs> Ooh, number one. Number one. Number one. Ooh, number one. Number one. Number one. One. Ooh, number one. Number one. Number one. Ooh, number one. Number one. Number one. Yeah, you know you like that little vogue at the end. That was pretty sweet, huh? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was dope. It was dope. But for real, though, number one is Get Out. This movie was absolutely brilliant. <laughs> Who better to combine race, horror, and comedy than Jordan Peele? If you watch 
Key and Peele, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And you'll understand why this movie works so freaking well. Again, this is another film that really ratchets up the tension uh, as it moves along. I mean, from the very uh, beginning all the way into the end, you always feel this sort of awkwardness and, and, and sort of uh, sense that something was about to go down. And after uh, the film's crowd-pleasing ending, I was ready to watch this movie again. Thinking back on this film after I've watched it, I realized that there were so many little things that you can catch. Like, I can watch it again, and then I will catch something different. That's just how cool uh, and brilliant this movie is. Almost nothing in this film is wasted, and everything means something. That's pretty freaking sweet, man. Jordan Peele's first uh, big screen uh, directorial, directorial debut <laughs> is a bona fide masterpiece. Alright guys, so that is the end of my top 10 of 2017. Now I'm looking forward to 2018, baby. And pretty soon here I'm going to be constructing a list of my uh, 10 most anticipated films of this year. It looks like we got some pretty good stuff lining up in the works, man. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching this. And if you're my subscriber and you're watching... Thank you so much for making 2017 really awesome for me and helping me sort of explore something I really love to do. I'm going to continue with this and I'm going to explore other platforms right now. I'm just trying to focus on, uh, you know, getting my tech up right now. You know what I'm saying? New camera, computer, all that jazz. But anyways, man, thank you guys uh, so much for watching this make sure you drop a like on it and click that subscribe button hey and feel free man to comment on this tell me how wrong i am tell me how much you agree with my choices and you can you know put your own choices down in the comment section below come on man come back for more because purple boy always got more baby